Hi friends, welcome to another episode of General Surgery MediC. Now we will be discussing on hernia meshes. We will be proceeding with this topic under these headings. First is introduction, next is properties of ideal mesh, physical characters and properties of a mesh, classification and types of various hernia meshes in use and finally recent advances. This entire lecture is based on recent MAMC updates and various other major papers that have been published and have mentioned it then and there for, for your further reference. First, let us look into some interesting history that is the concept of mesh was introduced by Usher in the year 1958 where he used a polypropylene mesh. Usher. Uh, then the concept was popularized by Lichtenstein where we know of Lichtenstein's tension-free repair. The person in the middle in this picture is Dr. Lichtenstein. Coming to definition, mesh refers to a prosthetic material that can be either a net or a flat sheet used to strengthen a hernia repair. It is used to bridge a defect that is simply fixed over the defect as a tension-free patch or plug a defect where the mesh is pushed into the defect or augment a repair that is the defect is closed with sutures and mesh is later added for reinforcement. Coming to characters of ideal mesh it should be biocompatible, it should resist to bacterial contamination and it should be non-carcinogenic and it should be readily available and it should be inexpensive reasonably and it should withstand physiological stress up to certain limit and it should uh, promote strong tissue in growth so as to provide sufficient strength and reinforcement it should maintain its original size and uh, it should inhibit adhesions, which is a very important factor. Otherwise, it will lead to obstruction. And finally, it should resist shrinkage, which we will see in later slides. For proper understanding of various mechanical properties of the mesh, we need to understand the definition of these properties. First, coming to weight, which is nothing but measurement of heaviness of the material that is weight by unit area very important property of a mesh second one is shrinkage which is nothing but dimensional decrease in length or width of a material Tensile strength is maximum stress that a material can withstand before breaking or tearing. This is also a very important property of the mesh. Elasticity is the property of the material whereby it changes its shape and size. when subjected to opposing forces and later recovers recovers its original shape original shape when forces are removed coming to the final property that is compliance of a mesh which is unit displacement or deformation of a material 
as a result of application of unit force. Having learned the definitions of basic properties, let us come into each of these properties in detail. The first one is elasticity and tensile strength of a mesh. As you have seen before, any deterioration in tensile strength or increase in stretchability of the mesh can lead to increased hernia recurrence. This is a very basic concept. The mesh is basically of two types, one is netted one, another is woven one. This is a microscopic picture of uh, these two type of meshes. Netted one is classically a Dacron mesh and Crowley mesh. They have greater flexibility and larger pores. Oven meshes are classically ultra pro. And classical property of this mesh is that it can be stretched only in the oblique direction. That is 90 degree to the intersection of their strands. These are the strands. The orientation of mesh is important in surgery because those meshes with anisotropic stretchability should be oriented or placed with the most stretchable axis in the direction of leaves to overlap so as to prevent the early mesh dislocation which can lead to recurrence of hernia. Coming to classification of mesh based on pore size, it is classified into four types. First one being macroporous, which is nothing but greater than 75 microns. An example of which is proline mesh. Microporous mesh are those with size less than 10 microns in at least one of their three dimensions. An example is expanded PTFE and dual mesh. Macro with microporous is a macroporous processes with multi-filaments or microporous components. Example is PTFE mesh braided Dacron mesh or a braided polypropylene mesh. Submicronic mesh. This is ideally not suitable for hernia surgery as they are prone for high incidence of adhesion, obstruction, for the erosion of uh, adjacent hollow viscous. An example of this is silastic or polypropylene sheeting. Also known as cell guard. Another classification based on porosity is class 1 is a large pore mesh with low risk of bridging where the textile porosity is greater than 50%. It is of three types. Type 1A is monofilament, 1B is multifilament, 1C is mixed or polymer. Class 2 is in direct contrast with class 1 that is small pore mesh with high risk of bridging and porosity less than 50%. Again it is of three types. A is monofilament, B is multifilament and C is mixed. And class 3 is a porous mesh with special features and those are to prevent adhesions which we have seen before. Class 4 is flim like mesh without porosity or submicronic pore site. Class 5 is complex textiles which are difficult to uniformly characterize. Those are pre-shaped or pre-formed meshes. Class 6 is tissue derived or biological mesh. A is non cross linked fibers, B is cross linked, and C is special features. Based on weight, Coda et al. classified meshes into four categories. First one is ultra weight, which he proposed to be less than 
35 gram per meter square. Light weight is 35 to 70 gram per meter square. Standard between 70 to 140 gram per meter square. And heavy weight is when it is greater than or equal to 140 gram per meter square. Another classification for uh, uh, based on weight is Erlen Mark, which was proposed in the year 2008, where he classified measures into again four types. Ultra weight is when similarly less than 35 gram per meter square. Light weight is 35 to 50 gram per meter square. Uh, medium weight is when he called as 51 to 90 gram per meter square. Heavy weight is greater than 90 gram per meter square. Based upon constitution, mist is classified into mono and multifilament with the disadvantage of multifilament uh, having increased chance of harboring microorganisms and chances of increased infection. Based on absorption, Meshes are classified into five types. The first one is non-absorbable and synthetic meshes. Example is the first one is polypropylene. Second one is polyester. And this one is expanded polytetrafluoroethylene. Next one is non-absorbable synthetic with barrier. And the barrier is used for preventing bubble adhesions when it is placed intraperitoneally. An example for these type of meshes are polyurethane, oxidized, regenerated cellulose and this is shown in the picture. Next is omega 3 fatty acid. Next is collagen. Synthetic partially absorbable meshes where we combine uh, fusion of non absorbable mesh like polypropylene with absorbable mesh such as polygalactin 910. The basic idea is to reduce the density of the biomaterial and the subsequent uh, inflammatory reaction caused by the mesh and also to retain the wound strength. Next is combined meshes where we combine two meshes taking the advantages of both of them. Finally biological meshes. These are produced to overcome the disadvantages of synthetic meshes. It involves tissue remodeling. along with mesh scaffold. An example of a biological mesh is porcine. It is obtained from the submucus of small intestine of porcine and human acellular dermis. Coming to the final classification that is commercially available meshes are classified into three generations first second and third the first one the first generations are synthetic and non-absorbable meshes second generations are combined or composite meshes third generation is in biological mesh the first generation is in turn uh, divided or classified into three types that is macroporous microporous or as you have seen before macroporous with multifilament and a classical example for First generation meshes are polygalactin, polypropylene mesh. Second generation meshes are divided into absorbable and non-absorbable type. Example of absorbable mesh are polyester, collagen. Example of non-absorbable meshes are dual mesh. Which is not expanded polytetrafluoroethylene mesh. And biological mesh, as you have seen before, are obtained from decellularized human dermis no, porcine submucosa. And we have reached the final topic of recent advances that is coated meshes. 
coated meshes are produced with the aim of minimizing the risk of infection. These are actually bilayered composite meshes and examples are polylactic acid or PLLA oxygenated regenerated cellulose or ORC N-vinyl pyrolidone or NVP nano crystalline silver particles or NCSP so with these materials coated meshes are produced with the aim of reducing the risk of infection finally nanofibers nanofiber has the advantage of high surface area attachment so examples are poly di ox anone otherwise known as PDO next is poly lactide co glycolide and finally poly urethane otherwise known as PU thus we have completed the entire mesh and its classification in detail. Thank you.